Good morning, Steve. How are you doing? Good, Melanie. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you. How was your weekend? Uh, it was good. It was uh, uh, pretty low key, you know, working around the yard because autumn's here and summer's over and yes. trying to keep myself busy. Yes. It was kind I, of a really bleary weekend, right, with all that smoke and whatnot. So I had to keep myself really busy. Yeah. You kept yourself busy to kind of keep your mind off of the cooling weather and the smoke. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have control over that. Um, True. But, uh, you know, we still have to work in the garden and stuff like that. I have total control over the chores I have to do around the home. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right? Yeah, so working yeah, so on what you can busy control. Times, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, good idea. And you, how was your weekend? It was good, but I have to admit, I was shocked. And, you know, I should know this. I'm old enough to know this. But how uh, the 20 degrees of the, of the fall season is so different yes. from the 20 degrees yeah. of the summer season. Yeah. Like, I was expecting to be warm. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But I wasn't. Well, definitely here for sure. Yeah, you that's right. how all the the colors on the trees have all started changing. All ready, yes. So to me, that's a real big sign. It's Whether we a... want it to happen or not, I think it may be because summer was so good as far as people staying at home and relaxing. And, yeah. And all of a sudden, it's, it's gone. You know, summer allowed us just such a reprieve from all the worries yes. and the concerns and the isolation that COVID has brought to us in the last seven months. And now I feel like this tightening, this sense yep. of having to go back into being more isolated inside, indoors, without the beauty of our parks and being able to get together with people outside. And Yeah, I think it's going to be a hard adjustment for people. I think so too. Like we're going to have to be real, really, and as Canadians, we're pretty good at being creative about how to go outdoors, but I'll see, I can see a really resurgence and, and people going out and buying ice skates and buying skis and doing all those things. We're pretty good at that, right? Yes. Yeah. And you know, those are great social distancing activities, ice Absolutely. skating, skiing, even tobogganing, if you're only, on, you know, one person per toboggan, because yeah. you got to be two meters away from people when you're doing those things. Yeah. And you're yeah, usually I think I think those outdoor activities are going to be a real life saver for a lot of people. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that sounds, you know, that uh, that's something to look forward to and that that reminds me that, you know, Steve, it's all in the way that you think about things, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, like it's very easy to to look around and to listen and to hear and see so much negativity and so much concern about how much worse things could get that we could get wrapped up in that and that could be where our mental health goes very negative very hopeless very yeah. helpless and yet there's also the possibility of thinking about the possible the possibilities the opportunities thinking in more positive ways yeah oh no i agree i think it's um it's, i always try to look at the possibilities and i think you know, change is always, there's always some positive or benefit to it. Yeah. Um, but, but I think right now it's, it's the challenge is really to keep thinking that way because it's like we're, we're being told to go back to do it the old way. So people are going back to the offices, our children are going back to school. Right. So we're actually going back to the old way of doing it. Um, so I, I'm not sure if people actually maybe subconsciously are kind of resenting that saying, no, I don't want to do that. Kind of liked it. It was safer. Yeah. Right. So I even I even notice it in our children. Right. Our children are starting to feel that stress now. Yes. I Whereas agree. for a lot of them, summer was summer, and they had a they, you know they joke about having six months off for summer this yeah. year and how nice it was. But yeah. um, a lot of these kids aren't thinking it's nice right now. No, that's for sure. Yeah. Right. So I think I, the summer was a good reprieve. Yeah, it was. So, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you and I talked about core beliefs and how mm -hmm. core beliefs are formed as we, as we grow and as we develop through the experiences that we have, the people that we meet, what we're told, what we hear about, what we learn. And those core beliefs then um, guide us in making our decisions in our life. And we talked about how, you know, changing a core belief is, is, um, the same sort of thing as like, you know, changing your glasses and seeing things through a different perspective. Yes. And I think that's what we're, you and I are talking about is noticing how right now during the, 
the transition to fall, the return to school, and all the predictions that are happening right now about the coronavirus, we're seeing through one set of glasses. And it can be pretty daunting. It can feel pretty negative. Mm -hmm. And so it's sometimes important. It's life-giving, life-enhancing to sometimes put on that other pair of glasses and see the possibilities, see the yeah. positives that may be presenting themselves to us. And I'm wondering, it sounds to me like that's almost like a transformative experience where um, we were sort of conditioned to think about a traditional way of doing things. And all of a sudden, our values and, and the values, say, a society, greater society, are starting to clash a little bit. Yeah, that's right. And that's creating a lot of anxiety for people where they're saying, well, hang on a sec, I used to believe in this. Yes. But maybe I don't anymore. Maybe it's not true. Maybe I yes. mean, but it's not true. So. I definitely think it's a time of reflection for people. Yeah. And having said that, that's what autumn and fall is, right? It's that time of year where we start to reflect upon things. Yeah. You know? I love that. So, yeah. So, yeah. So I think people are being view. challenged in their core beliefs, or I think people's core beliefs are actually becoming a lot more visible. Yes. Yeah. Now, it's important to remember, that, and, and this might come as a shock to a lot of people, that core beliefs which are thoughts thoughts are not always facts yes so just because we think them doesn't mean it's true so even if i think you know the sky is blue today another person might have a different thought like well you know it's a bit purplish today or it's a it's a shade of teal today or you know mm -hmm. it's, our thoughts can um reflect our own understanding and our thoughts are formed because of our experiences in the past and our personality, but they're not necessarily true. Now, thoughts can be, and core beliefs as well, can be both positive or negative. Yes. So they can lead us into positive behaviors if the, if the thoughts are positive. But if the thoughts are negative, it can lead us into more challenging or negative behaviors. So in cognitive behavioral therapy, we believe that whatever situation the person goes through causes a person to think certain thoughts. So for example, let's say this coronavirus. This coronavirus makes me have a thought of, this is dangerous, I will never survive. So my emotion becomes fear. I'm fearful for my own safety. And because I'm fearful, my behavior might be that I stay inside and I never leave. I don't go out. I'm afraid to go out because back to the thoughts, I'm afraid that if I do go out, I'm going to be in danger. So I stay inside and I self isolate, but to the, like, you know, to the point where I'm bitterly alone and not getting any help or resources. This is the cognitive model. And so the idea is that, if I want to change my behavior, so if, I, if I'm so desperately lonely that I know it's affecting my health and I know I need to do something, um, I can't, it's, it's pretty hard to just change my behavior. What I need to do is go all the way back to where it started. I can't change the situation either. Well, no. if, I, if I could, I would. But in this case, there's a lot we can't change when it comes to the coronavirus pandemic. So I go to the next, for, next um, thing that I can change, which is my thoughts. How can I change my thoughts about being unsafe during this coronavirus pandemic? And if I can change that to be more truthful, then I can change my behavior. Now, I'm not advocating that we would just radically shift our thoughts to, oh, this coronavirus is nothing. I'll be safe, you know, and then not take any precautions at all. But I'm advocating that we look at more truthful thoughts, which is, you know, this is a dangerous time. This is a time when I could be exposed to an unhealthy virus and get sick. But there's things that I can do to help myself be more healthy. Wearing a mask, sanitizing my hands, staying two meters apart. And if I do those things, I will feel more confident, more safe mm -hmm. when I go out Therefore, I can go out with these precautions and still connect with other people. And you go out because you have more control. You feel you have more control because you've looked at it more rationally. Exactly. That's exactly the word is more rationally. 
So I, I can see some of the times people struggling with um, the situation and, and the, all the information we're getting. Yes. And people developing thoughts and action are, are kind of negative and really self-destructive. Yes. And so really there's that big connection about how your ability to filter out the good information from the information that's not so accurate. Yes. Yeah. And that's, so that's the question. Yeah. How do you filter out what thoughts are helpful and what thoughts are unhelpful? Well, to start, c cognitive behavioral therapists have found that there are such commonalities in unhelpful thinking patterns. So what that means is that many of us think in unhealthy ways, very, very in, in common ways. So we do it in the same kind of way as, as other people. Okay. And so they've given names to these unhelpful thinking patterns. And okay. I'm going to talk about five today. One way that we think in unhelpful thoughts is we engage in all or nothing thinking. Yes. That's basically an inflexible way of thinking that, that where you believe that everything is either all good or it's all bad. There's no mm -hmm. in between. So an example that I've heard during this coronavirus of all or nothing thinking is, well, you know, it's those people who aren't wearing masks that are getting everybody sick. So they're, 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 it's, it's very much a focus on people who don't wear masks get everybody sick. Without looking at the gray in between, you know, like actually there's other ways to catch the virus. And mm -hmm. actually masks aren't 100% safe either. No. So, yeah. Melanie, I'm wondering when you say that, I yeah. can't help but wonder if someone's level of anxiety actually influences those thoughts. Um, so it's like a big, it's a very um, cyclical, right? It, it, you start to, you read too much information, you get too much information, then your thoughts start to become really negative, but then it's co constantly being fed. So how do you, how do you figure that out? Okay, so here's my other diagram. The situation okay. is they get some news, they yeah. create thoughts that I'm in danger. My emotion is that I'm fearful. Yeah. So I behave in ways like I avoid people. Yeah. And then it goes around and around and around. Like you said, my behavior then causes the next situation, which is now I'm lonely or, you know, whatever that is, which then causes the next thought. Yeah, it, you're totally right. It can snowball so big. It's so tightly wound that it's hard for somebody to even get a sense of where do I even start? How do I change this for myself? Yeah. It all seems so intertwined together. So we're going to do a mindfulness at the end of today where um, we take a look at the thoughts and, you know, label them as what, it, if it's an unhelpful thinking pattern, pattern, we label it as such and then be able to move on from that thought. And that's one way for people to start, okay. to be able to start pulling those pieces apart and cause the cycle to be interrupted so that you can more easily make it linear so that I'm going to think this so that it causes this emotion and then I'm, that's going to cause me to behave in a more healthy way in that situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the next unhelpful thinking thought or unhelpful thinking pattern, sorry, is fortune telling. Mm. Have, you, have you ever heard of somebody engaging in fortune telling, particularly to the coronavirus? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, there's gloom and doom everywhere. That we talk. Yes. I think that adds to the fear and anxiety level of people. Yeah. Because you have but, no really control what's going to happen in the future. And honestly, none of us really know. None of us know. You know, right now, everybody's fortune telling that because the schools have gone back um, in the way that they've gone back, by Thanksgiving, the city is going to be shut down again. Yeah. You know, and for some people, that's a very scary thought. Mm -hmm. So that maybe, you know, they might kind of stop doing or stop progressing. They might take their kids out of school. They might stop looking for a job. They yeah. might, you know, feel kind of helpless. Like, I don't even know what to do if it's just going to shut down in six weeks again. Yeah, I, you know, and I can think of a few people that were supporting it. They were saying, I'm not sure if I want to go back to my job. Yeah. Because this Boring. is what I'm hearing, right? And so yeah. there's a, a lot of fear being projected out there. Yeah. When we're not quite sure if things are actually going to go south, and no one really quite knows. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But like you were saying, it's really important for people to identify that I, I mean, I can't tell the future. Like 
definitely the news and the statistics and the information all is pointing a certain direction, but you never know. It yeah. could turn out differently. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then another unhelpful thinking habit that we all engage in, because I can attest to this one, is mind reading. Oh, yes, yes. Thinking that we know what another person is thinking about us or towards us. So mm -hmm. I do this when I, you know, whether I'm wearing a mask or whether I don't wear a mask. Um, I'll just take the example of when I don't wear a mask. I see somebody and if they're wearing a mask, I automatically assume that they must be looking at me thinking, oh, you're not a rule follower. You're going to make us all sick. And then I feel bad yeah. and guilty. Yeah. It's and I that just pack mentality, right? You feel like, oh, no. Yeah, I think, you know, that leads people to think, you know, develop a lot of assumptions about yes. each other, right? Without actually checking in. Yes. And it creates yeah. distance between us, not connection. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's highlighting the difference. Actually, that's a really good point. Yeah. In our society, we, we work so hard at making us everyone feel inclusive, but the very fact if you wear a mask or you don't wear a mask can actually really discriminate against people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. The other one, um, the fourth one, is called emotional reasoning. And that one's a bit of a different, difficult one to understand. But basically what it means is that when I feel a certain way, I believe that that feeling tells me about the situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about when I'm watching the news at night and it makes me feel really negative, really hopeless, really helpless. So I start to believe that, you know, I, I must be really hopeless or I must be, you know, I'm, I'm bound to fail. Or I might be thinking this situation with the coronavirus is really negative, really hopeless, really helpless. But just because I feel a certain way doesn't mean it is a certain way. So just because this, the, the, the way that I feel listening to the news, I feel so helpless, doesn't mean that actually there's nothing I can do about the situation. Um, in fact, there, you know, there may be things. In fact, that's a healthy way to deal with that, that feeling is to actually go out and do the stuff that I do have control over mm -hmm. so that I can feel a sense of, um, accomplishment and I can feel a sense of control over what I have control yeah that's a that's a really good point yeah I think it's almost like we have to go back to when COVID first started and what we did back then to make ourselves feel good and to nurture ourselves mm -hmm. yeah and maybe in the everyday you know hectic life that we've fallen into again we sort of forgot those those truths yeah those ways that we've actually worked and we you know you know, and for a lot of us, we, we were really good at coming up with solutions to alleviate that stress in the last six months. But all of a sudden now we're being thrust back into the world. Yeah. And we've seemed to have forgotten our ways about that. Right. And it can happen really fast, too. So I think the pace is a really big issue, too, right? It can, we can go from one day to feeling positive to feeling really negative in the next two or three days afterwards. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. And just because we feel that way doesn't mean that it is that way. Exactly. You know, because we could be feeling um, negative or we could be feeling bad or guilty because of other things. Like I, I know that I tend to feel more negative when I'm tired or yeah. hungry or, yeah. you know, um, uh, too many things are on my plate. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't actually give me a realistic understanding of the situation. It just means that maybe I have to pull back a little bit and Take it, like you said, take care of myself a bit more, nurture Check myself. Out. Yeah, Check we need out. to start checking yeah. out on a regular basis. Yes, yes, back to checking out. Absolutely, I'm feeling like I'm getting to that point where I need another checkup. Yeah, me yeah. too. <laughs> and then the last one is catastrophizing, and I think that one's a bit more, more simple to understand. It just means that basically thinking the worst is going to happen or, or worrying that the worst is going to happen. Yeah. There seems to be a lot of that going on, doesn't there? Well, yeah, and I think all of these tie into the fact that the very beginning is the information that we receive, right? And so yeah. um, if you look at it logically, uh, like I started in the last couple of days, made a, a vow that I'm not going to read the news as much anymore. I'm just not yeah. going to. Yeah. Because you can get the same story, but someone, you can get five different news channels or different mediums actually telling you the same story again and again. Yeah. 
Yes. Which I think adds to this feeling of this is a huge major catastrophe. Yes. And then what happens is we start to filter the information that we're sort of bringing in. So for us, we were just chatting about our school system and how, you know, if kids get in contact, they're isolated and how damaging that is for their mental health. But I was reading how in Denmark, they've always kept the schools open. Yeah. And so, you know, I think we need to start thinking about alternatives to what's happening right now, rather than focus on this yes. potential catastrophe, because we're not quite sure if it's going to be a catastrophe. Yes. We're kind of predicting gloom and doom, which personally just depresses me, right? Because I like to think positive of things all the time. And so mm -hmm. I seek out the positive to make sure that my thoughts are positive. Yes. But it's hard to not fall into to not fall into that way of thinking, right? It's hard yeah. not to think negative right now. Well, and you know what? We're only human. So it's okay for us to fall into that trap every once in a while. And knowing that these unhelpful thinking patterns are common to everyone, yes. all of yeah. us do those things. Yeah. So really it's not a matter of not doing them or, or even demeaning ourselves if we do do them. It's just a matter of being able to say, ah, there it is. Yes. Okay. What can I do to help myself through that? You know, like you were saying, looking at the positives, looking at what I have control over, just checking out and taking a break and giving myself some time to just, you know, just pretend like it's not happening and just focus on me and what I need, whether it's with the trees or the garden or my family or whatever yeah. it is on the ski hill, you know? We should fall back to what works well for us. Yes. That's right. Listening to music can be a big one for people mm -hmm. or mindfulness. So let's do a mindfulness right now that does just that, Steve. Okay. It helps people to acknowledge the thoughts, not to be attached to them, but to acknowledge them like as if a scientist would acknowledge them. You know, I had this visual uh, the, um, just earlier today, and it was like, you know, you're walking through a park and you notice the flowers and just noticing for what they are, the color, the form, the shape, the smell without saying, oh, mm, I don't like that flower, or wow, that's, you know, like, no opinion, no judgment, just what is it? Okay. And that's what we're going to do with our thoughts today. Okay. Is that's just like noticing them for what they are. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to ask people to get um, comfortable, seated, laying down, whatever way is comfortable for you. Feet, both feet on the floor, closing your eyes or keeping them open, whatever's your preference, and then just focusing in on that breath and allowing that breath to come in and out of your body. No need to change it in any way. Just allow your body to breathe itself. Taking a few moments to just notice your breath coming in and out, in and out. And as you're thinking about your breath, you may notice, you might notice that your mind is distracted by thoughts, by emotions, by physical sensations. You might just Acknowledge that thought, emotion, or physical sensation for what it is. Noting it and then allowing it to be while you come back to your breath. Focusing in on the strength of your breath, the temperature of your breath how your body moves in rhythm to your breath. Noticing your breath as your anchor to your present moment, to this place where you are right now. And as a thought comes to mind, Notice it as if you were a scientist, an outside observer, looking at it for its quality or its content, 
What kind of a thought is it? If it's a planning thought, you may acknowledge it with a simple, hmm, that's planning. And then let it go and return to the focus on your breath. Or you may have a thought, like an unhelpful thinking thought, all or nothing, catastrophizing, mental filter or emotional filter. Noting your thoughts, taking a look at them for what they are, like a scientist, and then labeling them and then letting them go and returning to your breath. You may notice that some thoughts are resistant to labeling. They may be vague. It might be just a feeling that you're having or a physical sensation. And that's okay. You need not label them if it doesn't come easily or if it doesn't feel comfortable. You can just note that thought emotion or physical sensation, acknowledging it and then returning back to your breath as the focus of your present awareness. And as much as possible, focusing on your breath as it comes in and out. And as much as you, as often as you need to, every time a thought or a feeling or a physical sensation comes to mind, just continuing to note it, to label it if possible, and come back to your breath. You can do this over and over as many times as you need to. Knowing that it's normal for your brain to bring awareness to thoughts feelings and physical sensations. It's a indication that your brain is doing exactly what it's meant to do. But knowing that thoughts, emotions and physical sensations are just events, they're just mental events. And that you need not avoid or deny or follow them through to their end. You need not become attached to them. That in this moment, acknowledging them, identifying their presence, and then moving back to your breath can allow you to be in this present moment connecting with your being in this moment, from moment to moment, without judgment. To allow a little clarity. So a few more moments to focus in on the breath to acknowledge your feelings, emotions, and physical sensations. And then, as we bring this mindfulness practice to a close, 
You may want to begin to pay more attention to the sounds around you, to the way that your body feels against the chair or the couch or the floor, wherever you're seated against. You may want to start to move in whatever way feels comfortable. And as you're ready, opening your eyes to take in the sights of the place around you and to come back to this discussion. How was that, Steve? I was good, actually. Exactly what I needed good. for today. It's kind of like a little checkout, isn't it? It is, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you notice that you were having any thoughts like that were um, similar to our unhelpful thinking patterns? Oh, absolutely. They kept popping in and popping in. Yeah. And I kept pushing them back. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. And, you know, people will say, well, I don't do meditation very well because I get too distracted. There's too many thoughts. Mm -hmm. But what I've heard said, which I love, is that actually the more thoughts you have, the more practice you get. You just keep practicing going from that thought back to your breath. And every time you practice that, you strengthen your skills in mindfulness. So it's not a failure, it's a success. No, it's probably one of the activities where failure actually is important for you to be <laughs> successful. <laughs> Isn't that true? I love that. I haven't heard that, yeah. but I love that. Yeah. It's so, it's so true. Yeah, it fits. Well, Good. thanks for spending another morning with me, Steve. Thanks, Melanie. It's always a pleasure. It's a nice way to start the week. Yeah. Enjoy the I rest of your Monday. Thank you. You too, and I'll see you next week. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Well, that was good. Well, do you know what? Just a sec.